The book of the Bible that I will be speaking on today is Colossians. Um, Colossians was written by Paul, and it is, it is an epistle written by Paul. Um, it is believed to have been written between the years of um, 59 to 62 AD, and it was um, written to the church in Colossae. And it is similar, it is said to have been similar to the book of Ephesians. Um, some of the historical context surrounding the book of Colossians is um, we see a lot in the epistles in the New Testament that there was um, false, te false teachings and these doctrines of false teachings. Um, and so the church in Colossae had, all, had fallen prey to the false teachings and in um Nelson's Bible Dictionary, he states, false teaching had taken root in Colossae. Such teaching combined Jewish observances and pagan speculation. This teaching pretended to or improve upon the gospel that indirectly at least had come from Paul. Um, the book of Colossians speaks to two major points. Um, those points are the divine nature of Christ and that Christ is all we need, and that a personal relationship with him is all that we need. Um, one of the verses in Colossians that speaks to this is Colossians 2, 9 through 10. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body, so you also are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and every authority. And that is Colossians 2, 9 through 10, um, the New Living Translation. Um, I, I personally believe that because we are in Christ and Christ is in us, um, that the divine nature of Christ lives in us. Um, you know, when he died on the cross and rose three days later and, and so that we could accept him and believe and, and confess and and know that he's our savior and that we have salvation through him. And, and because of that Holy Spirit living in us, we um, we have that divine nature living in us. Um, Benjamin Blackwell's um, from his You Are Filled in Him, Theosis, on in Colossians 2 through 3, he states, um, his, defini his definition for deification is the process of restoring likeness to God, primarily experienced as incorruption and sanctification through a participatory relationship with God, meditated by Christ and the Spirit. Through the Son and the Spirit, believers become adopted sons of God, even gods by grace and not by nature, because they participate in divine attributes such as life and holiness. Colossians 1.15 states in the New International Version, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. One of the repeated words in Colossians after doing a bit of a word study in Colossians is all. Um, Colossians 3.11 states, Christ is all and in all we need. And this, this goes back to, you know, the one of the major points is, the word all is in that major point. Christ is all we need. A personal relationship with him is all we need. And so we, even though all is such a small word, we see it repeated over and over in Colossians. Um, and I believe that's to bring about this knowledge that we know, that we should know and trust that um, Christ is all we need, that he is sufficient, that his grace is always enough. Um, and he's good and he is faithful. Um, Colossians 3, 1 through 3 states, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on this earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. Um, As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Graham Tomlin states in his um, commentary on Colossians, um, he is the true tree of life, loaded with fruit that we might gather, set open before our eyes and to our hands, not shut up as the other was after the fall, in a place of 
and accessible. He is received to give to us. He is rich to enrich us. He is full to replenish us. His abundance is our bliss and his treasures are the relief of our necessity. The father gave him the world and in him life and immortality. Neither suppose that he will impart only some of his benefits as he has a superabundance of them in himself. So he communicates them all to us. He leaves no part of our nature empty. He fills up, up all with his graces. We derive from him all that is necessary to complete us. Even though we see some similarities between um, Colossians and, and Ephesians, um, Colossians is a book of scripture all on its own. Colossians tells us of the divine nature of Jesus Christ. It tells us exactly who he is. Colossians encourages us as believers to completely yield our lives to the will of God. It encourage us to, encourages us to desire with all of our hearts to be like Christ. Um, Nelson states, the beautiful epistle on the majesty of Jesus Christ speaks to us today as much as to the Colossians. It reminds us that Jesus Christ is sufficient for every need and is still the most powerful force in the world.